I deleted every nation in the world with at least 50 development and using colonized please, we're going to let the remaining countries fill the voids left behind. No Ottomans to dominate the entire region, no France to contest the Holy Roman Empire, and no Scots to sell us deep fried Mars bars. The colonized please videos tend to do very well with you guys. And if you want to let me know that you enjoy it, make sure to like the video because if we get at least 4,000 likes on this video, we will be running it back with nations with more than 25 development. And while you're down there, make sure to subscribe for plenty more fun content like this to come. Question of the day for you guys, who is the most handsome Europa Universalis 4 YouTuber aside from yours truly? Let us know in the comments below. It is time once again, my friends, to return to colonize please. As I would have said in the intro, anybody with more than 50 development will be cut from the world. They will be kaput and uh, only the smaller nations, anybody with less than 50 shall remain. I also got rid of the migratory natives of North and South America because they are worthless and all they do is uh, slow stuff down and make your game run slower. No reason other than that, I promise. And so it really could be anybody's game. Anybody who has a coastline or an empty province next to them will receive the colonized please buff. And that buff gives a ton of money, allowing you to get two free colonists, essentially, as well as a bunch of settler speed. There is a colonial range malice, and that is basically to make it so people aren't colonizing like the new world in 1445. As far as the favorites go, it's really anybody's game. I don't know if I have like a for sure pick. I was talking to a couple of my patrons and we think that Granada will probably be a good pick because they'll get Andalusia really quick. And then anybody out here, like a rise on perm anybody who can get a lot of this land over here and maybe form russia they will definitely have a good chance obviously all of these nations are gone so we're gonna have to go ahead and turn it up to speed five and get it at least until the next month so we can take a look at who the new great powers are and i'm really excited to see who is able to kind of become the big guy from the small guys and go on to be the great powers but lads if you want to become a great power yourself you got to check out the sponsor of today's video raid shadow legends if you somehow don't know about raid shadow legends by now it is a massive hero collection rpg on android and ios with an incredible 80 million active players worldwide there's a lot to love about raid aside from the fact that it is entirely free to play it has some of the best graphics i've ever seen on a mobile game even rivaling some modern pc titles and if you are one of the few who are still on the fence and have yet to give it a try i came up with a fun little acronym to learn you a thing or two about it there are regular updates with new content being added constantly to keep all players new and old engaged with plenty to do a pvp arena where the sweaty competitives amongst you can duke it out and uh, test your teams a massive index of over 650 unique champions that you can check out planning how to play both with and against which i'm sure would appeal to you nerds that love to micromanage every little thing you do and then there's the doom tower which is just one of many incredibly crafted dungeons that you can climb through and face powerful bosses earning awesome rewards along the way including some seriously powerful champions it's also raid's fourth birthday so there's extra stuff coming out that you can get excited about including dedicated offers free loot and we all love free stuff promo codes and events including the brand new fusion event. Established players will have access to a custom recap video showing their stats in Raid, so you can see just how much you've really built in the world of Raid. Oh, and Amazon Prime members who just got Gembo should keep their eyes peeled for the next loot drop with some powerful Savage gear through March 30th. If you are late to the party, that's alright, because you can sign up using my link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen and you will get yourself a slick bonus birthday package including the epic champion Kellen the Shrike, as well as other useful things like energy refills, magic potions, and XP brews. And while you're at it, whether you are a new or returning player, make sure to get yourself something nice for Raid's birthday using the promo code four years raid to snag four legendary skill tomes and other goodies. Easy peasy. Once you get into the game and you are ready to start squishing some baddies, come and find me under the name Chewy Shoot, and you might be able to join my clan if you're quick enough. Again, click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen, and I'll see you on the battlefield. So the number one great power is Ashikaga. They only have 21 development themselves, but uh, clearly with the Shogunate, they have a lot more than that. Saxony has a bit of development, but mostly in subjects as well. So you can see nobody has over 50 development. Flanders does, but I think it's because they literally are colonizing right here. Yeah, th they're colonizing already. So you're going to see a lot of people popping out colonists immediately. Um, and it's really anybody's game. There's going to be plenty of route for expansion all over the place. I reckon that Europe will fill in very quickly. It'll be a mad dash to fill in China and like the roofs and the steps over here. Obviously the new world is a lot of development, but it's hard to say how uh, really impactful that will be. But you know, there's only one way to find out and that's to speed five and unpause. We all know about 
London, the uh, Dutch colony here. Most people are going to be colonizing land near them. You see Mazovia, Moldavia, Wallachia. Everybody over here is going to be just kind of blobbing out, spreading out and getting a bit of a power base initially. And then they will eventually start migrating. I'm really hoping to see like a, a very strong Qing form or something like that. That would be really good. Theodoro over here is already three provinces big and uh, Byzantium has crossed the straits into Anatolia, reclaiming a bit more of the old lands for the Greeks. I also would not be surprised at all to see Caraman grow up and form Rum. Uh, they're probably the strongest nation or have the best chance of doing it. And if they could form Rum, they would be incredibly powerful. Poor Bosnia is uh, not really going to have much of a chance. It looks like they're going to get cut off. Good old Croatia cutting off Bosnia from the coast and then also going to be cutting them off from the interior as well. Mazovia and Moldavia touching tips over here. And the Rus is slowly filling in. You got below zero. You got Peskov, Riga looking pretty good over here. Tver, but Ryzon is definitely my favorite of the area. Gotland has yet to get land, and I don't know why, but um, they'll do it eventually, I'm sure. It's probably a financial concern. The AI calculates finance is funny. Flanders is doing incredibly well all the way over into uh, Normandy, and uh, they are definitely getting quite a good power base because you got to remember the uh, the trade note over here, the English Channel, is incredibly powerful, especially in the late game. Scotland has been formed by the Isles, so uh, you can't escape these tags, and it's only a matter of time before whoever conquers this land to form Great Britain. Montferrat is doing a little bit of hopping on the coasts over here. They are well into Iberia, battling it out with Navarra and Andalusia, which has formed very quickly. And then Luca has colonized the Mediterranean islands and is down into Sicily. Bazan has formed Tunis and a bunch of the former Moroccan lands have been taken already by their former subjects. Oh man, yeah, Serbia got down and uh, cut off Byzantium from the rest of Greece. That's a little strange. I don't know why Byzantium is uh, prioritizing the land over here in Anatolia rather than like their own lands, but they're uh, currently getting some land back, some reconquest. So we'll see how things go. We're going to let a little bit of time go by and kind of see where things settle out as uh, Europe starts to fill in. Five years in, things are finally starting to fill out for the most part, and it looks like the Dutch have gotten most of the lower parts of Britain. Flanders has taken the northern parts of France, splitting it with Navarra, this Armagna or whatever, and then Never is actually getting quite a bit of the development. Andalusia and Montferrat splitting Iberia with Navarra. And aside from that, there's not really any nations that are significantly larger than anybody else. Piscov just took a very large portion of Riga's land, and they're actually pushing over here into Stockholm. So Piscov is probably going to be the regional power in the north uh, with Mazovia and Moldavia, whoever ends up kind of duking it out between the two of them, taking over Poland. North Africa is a bit of a mess, uh, mixed bag here. Luca over here in Cyrenaica with Ragus in Egypt next to Karamanese Egypt, as well as uh, Yemeni Palestine. So we've got a ton of different tags that are kind of sniping this land over here because it is very wealthy land. The Russian tags continue to duke it out and it's only a matter of time before we start to get sort of a regional hegemon there. Baluchistan as well as Afghanistan and Khorasan all doing pretty well over here. India is disgusting. It is a huge mess. It's even uglier than it usually is. Uh, mostly just because all of the tags here are like OPM in 1444. Uh, there's a bunch of new colors that I don't really know. Like Mewat is a cool color. There are OPM, I think, like right here. Uh, and then this Kalpi is a very nice color as well. Uh, Idar is a nice color. Bastar, a nice color. But uh, yeah, anybody's game over here, I it, I would be very, very foolish to try to claim a winner in this group over here. Meanwhile, over in Southeast Asia and Southern China, we do have people filling it up over here. We have Tondo over here from the Philippines taking over this uh, Fujian area. Now, I'm pretty sure I know this, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong if you know, but I'm pretty sure that every Chinese food place in America is ran by people who are from Fujian or Fuzhou or however this area is called. I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Aside from them, we have Champa and then this Muang Fan over here in uh, southern China. We have Suk Hatai over here taking up most of uh, the old Ayutthaya land, splitting it with Pegu and uh, looking pretty good. We do have Lan Fang over here taking up most of Borneo, which is really cool because if you guys don't know, Lan Fang is, I believe, I believe that they're event spawn. I could be wrong. They've taken up a lot of land over here on the west coast of the island and they are a Chinese tag. Doing pretty good. Bali taking up most of the land down in uh, Java as well as uh, these islands over here at East Timor and with that sort of area. The good old boner boys hanging in there, but uh, doing nothing interesting except for, you know, being the boners. The Horn of Africa and West Africa in general is a huge mix mash of a ton of different stuff. Mutapa's down into the Horn, which is pretty cool. But uh, one thing that I'm pretty excited about coming over here, seeing the homies. On 
the map, doing well, colonizing the uh, Ivory Coast over here, getting a bit of a uh, trade basis, and uh, I'm excited to see how they go. If you know, you know, and if you are not one of the homies yet, you can click the join button below the video, get early access to the videos on this channel, as well as access to exclusive Discord roles and chat rooms in the Discord. Support the channel if you want. Like I said before, if you're interested in checking out the sponsor of the video raid, you can check out the link in the description, or you can become one of the homies with the join button below the video. And only five years in, Mazovia is over 240 development with Andalusia all the way out with 241. Flanders almost up to 300 and rise on with a lot of development for themselves. Mazovia has a personal union of Opoli or Opoli or however it's pronounced, which is really good for them. And Ryzan has a PU on Tver as well, the Rorikovich. So a few interesting personal unions going on over in the Christian lands. Uh, it's only going to be a matter of time before some really weird stuff starts happening as if, you know, <laughs> this stuff going on right here isn't already weird as is. So we're <laughs> We're 40 years in, and there has definitely been some interesting developments. For example, we have our first colonial nation of the New World over here in uh, Lucan, Canada. Likewise, we have the uh, Lucan West Indies, and I uh, can't forget about Curacao down there. They are the only nation that has colonized overseas here. They even got uh, the Azores. So uh, yeah, shout out Luca. And it's funny because I absolutely love this tag and the homies are popping off, pushing into the Congo after getting the entirety of the Ivory Coast all the way over to the West Coast, which is incredible for them considering that they're so small and weak in the very beginning of the game. Utapa continues to uh, slowly consolidate their development over here down in Southern Africa. And the Horn is clearing up with Anjuran taking a most of the development over there. Arabia is definitely a mess, but uh, it looks like Mushasha is kind of the uh, Iraq slash uh, kind of southern Persia of this game and they're doing pretty good and meanwhile India the steppes and China is still a crazy mess uh, though it does look like calm over there from Tibet is pushing well into China all the way up into the north uh, challenging Tondo over there for uh, the coasts of China. Perm is uh, pushing out past the Urals, but the Ryzon has consolidated the majority of the development of Russia with their personal union of Tver. So it's safe to say that the Ryzon will inevitably form Russia in this time. Circassia is doing pretty good over here, bordering a couple of nations, namely Theodoro and uh, Shervon doing fine, I suppose. Byzantium with weird border gore, and I don't think they fought a single war against any of these major nations over here. A uh, little disappointing, but you know, it is what it is. Mazovia still a regional power with their subject of Opoli and Moldavia looking to contest them, but they are allied to Ryzon, so Moldavia is probably safe. Piskov got dominated and lost all of their land in Scandinavia to Pomerania, of all people, and uh, then we got Dutch Scandinavia over here in Norway. And looking at the great power status, some things may not quite add up. You see here, it says Holland with 777 development, and that is because they have 448 of themselves and half of their subjects is 329. My friends, it is because they have two personal unions, one in Flanders, their direct neighbor, and then one in, of course, the inevitable France that formed by, uh, I don't remember who, I think it was like, uh, formed by Nevers. Of course, Nevers formed France. All right, man. So yeah, on top of getting most of the development over here on the British Isles, they also have two personal unions that uh, combined are incredibly powerful. The entire northern portion of France, as well as getting all the way down to the Gulf of Lyon. And speaking of the Gulf of Lyon, you can see Luca here has been pushed back because Andalusia is doing incredibly, incredibly well, as I would have expected. Though the development of Italy is very much disunited. We do have Urbino in the central portions, Luca up here in uh, Tuscany, and then Switzerland is over here in uh, whatever this Lombardy region, splitting it with Trent and uh, Ferrara. So as I showed you, Holland is well out in first place, but Andalusia is doing incredibly well. And once they get colonizing, things are going to get very quick for them. Followed by Tondo, who controls the majority of the development in China, which is incredible for them. Ryazan with their personal union of Tver. Mazovia with their personal union of Opoli. Kam over there, a Tibet nation. Pomerania pushing up into Sweden. And then Luca, who controls most of the development over here on North Africa, as well as lands over in the New World. But I think you guys know who I'm rooting for. By the way, we will be doing a video, All Monuments in Abome, the, the, the capital of Dahomey's, in a, one of the future videos within the next month or so. So stay tuned for that and subscribe if you are not already. 100 years in and things are looking a little... Uh, 
A little sus. We've got some sussy boys over here in Brazil as well as down in La Plata, but not for long because they are being encroached on by the Pomeranian, Colombians, Peruvians, and La Platins. La Platinians? But what do you call these guys? Platinians? We also have French Brazil, which uh, is equally as terrifying as Susian Brazil. But uh, up in the north, it's all Tuscan because Laca, or Luca, or whatever it's pronounced, has formed Tuscany. And now we have Tuscan Mexico, Louisiana, New Tuscany, and Tuscan Canada right next to Pomeranian Canada and Andalusian Canada. Pomerania is also over here on the coast, getting Cascadia as well as California on the west coast. We have Balinese Australia right across from uh, Balinese Australia down under. And a very nice Siam has formed right next to a couple of very interesting tags. One of them being Tondo, who is an absolute behemoth in the region. And then Calm, apparently, who has decided to choose violence and push everyone out from around them, becoming the largest name in the region by a long shot. That is until you start pushing over this way and you see the most massive Ryzon I have ever seen absolutely demolishing through everybody and they are now Russia. They will form Russia. They're only on Admin Tech 9, so they can't do it right now, but they definitely will. Byzantium's borders are like legitimately exactly the same as they were like 50 years ago. <laughs> they haven't done anything and I don't know why, but they haven't. Moldavia has been destroyed and Mazovia has become an absolute shell of what it once was. They do still have their personal union, but uh, they are very, very tiny. Pomerania, however, is doing very well with their uh, colonial empire. And uh, we do now have the Dutch, which has formed the Netherlands tag is here, and it is actually integrating France at the moment. And Flanders remains very loyal, so no major changes on that front. But uh, aside from France doing a bit of colonization, things are looking very good for the Dutch. Down in Africa, I bless the rains down in Africa. Dahomey's dominating, getting most of the Congo and pushing well up into the Sahel. They are like on tech eight, so they're really far behind. Everyone else is on like 10 and 11, but uh, they are doing incredibly well. And I am still very much rooting for them. Also, Mutapa has been pushed out of Mutapa by this Maravi and Kilwa. So uh, it's only going to be a matter of time before we start to really see the regional powers. I think Dahomey probably is going to get most of Africa. Andalusia is going to get most of the land over here. And the Dutch are going to get most of the land over here. And then Russia is going to just go rampaging. Uh, as far as lands over in India, it's really anybody's game. Delhi is doing pretty good, but they don't even have Delhi, which is really funny. Oh, they do have Delhi. It's just on the very border. Uh, aside from that, Mushasha is pretty good. But yeah, it's hard to say who exactly is the absolute powers. That is, of course, except for the great powers with Tuscany well out in front, of course, because of that very massive colonial empire, followed by Andalusia, who is doing incredibly well on their own. But the Netherlands not far behind. As soon as they integrate their subjects, they should jump well out into the front spot with uh, Pomeranian following them rise on tondo over in china again absolutely massive and then my pocket pick here serbia with 400 development doing incredibly well it seems like they've just been left alone enough to uh, grow up and become uh, this number seven great power and then following the eighth spot is siam i'm really curious to see who pulls out ahead and uh, i'm curious who you guys are rooting for let us know in the comments below hello 1821 my old friend quite a uh, green world but we're gonna take a look into the finer details of things i said that uh, ryazan was gonna form russia and oh boy did they making probably one of the best russias i have ever seen the ai manage and uh, we're not even in 1.35 yet boys and uh, russia absolutely doing whatever they want poor tondo was kicked out of china by uh, russia calm and a massive siam but uh, you can't count out revolutionary Japan over there looking very good. Balinese Australia and Balinese Australia going strong, doing exactly the same thing that they've been doing for hundreds of years. And we actually have an Indo blob over here, Marathas, doing pretty good and uh, basically being the only major power in the area that is, except for Russia. <laughs> Something you don't see very often, a Shia Mushasha dominating all the way from Anatolia to uh, past Hormuz. So very good for them. But here in the south of Arabia, you're going to notice some blue all the way over into the Horn of Africa. And my friends, ah, you love to see it. The homies absolutely dominated this time around. And uh, they just so happen to be one of my favorite tags in the game. Byzantium, believe it or not, does still exist. Uh, but I'm not really sure in what major capacity they're squished between Mushasha Russia and a very massive Italy that has formed by Tuscany, who was formed by Luca. So quite the uh, event chain there. We have Dalmatian Crete over here with uh, Dalmatian Ragusa over here. Very cool. Gotland managed to uh, hold still for an entire campaign from 1444 
1821, and I don't think they colonized or conquered a single province. So uh, shout out to them for being entirely, entirely rock solid the whole game. Of course, Pomerania did well in their own regard, but uh, they ended up getting overshadowed by the Netherlands. My goodness, have you ever seen a more beautiful AI Netherlands? Because I don't think I have. Andalusia is like seven or eight provinces here in uh, southern Iberia, and that's about it. They've got a couple of random provinces around, but uh, they've lost everything. We have France Antarctique over here in Brazil, which is a French colony of the Dutch in Brazil. Okay, and I'm happy to let you guys know that SUS still exists over here in Las Malvinas, over here on the Falkland Islands. Very funny, I didn't realize why there was a Sussi in Brazil, and it actually was because they were a subject of a one province miner in the Falklands. That was their capital. Uh, obviously, they broke free, which means that this is indeed a Sunni Brazil. <laughs> Aside from that, it's a couple of Italian provinces, but for the most part, South America, very Pomeranian. North America is a different story, though. Very Italian. Uh, they speak like this and they eat the, they cook the pizza and eat the meatball up here in America. And then uh, Pomerania over here on the left coast. The religion map is super interesting. You can see here that the Reformation literally doesn't exist. There is one reformed province here in Saxony. There is a reformed nation over here in Bavaria, though their province is reformed. It's a mess. We do have a Protestant Mazovia over here in uh, the Carpathian Basin. Very funny. Uh, I don't know how they managed that. They migrated from up here. But uh, Mazovia does still exist with a von Wittelspach on their throne as well. Very good. Same as Gotland. Look at that. They share a dynasty with Gotland. Of course, the Rus spread Orthodox and Hindu is still the primary religion over here in India. And like I said, Shia Islam is actually the majority faith here in uh, the Middle East and the Levant. Confucianism is gone. I don't think there's any more Confucian provinces. It's all either Hindu or Buddhist. Um, that's pretty cool. Likewise, all the lands over here are Hindu. They are usually Sunni. Usually. So that's really cool. And that means, yes, we do have Hindu Australia with some animists over here. These are the Maori over here. So yeah, pretty cool. As I said, Sunni Brazil, aside from that, it's all Catholic. North and South America, all Catholic. Cultures tends to be where things get a little more interesting in my opinion. You can see here, uh, the Dutch definitely did a fair bit of colonization and the Pomeranians did the rest because that is a very prolific culture group, that uh, Germanic group there. And Flemish all the way from Brest over to whatever this Limburg. So uh, the Flemish did pretty good as well. Safe to say the Flemish won the race to the sea this time. They actually won the race to all of the sea. Swiss culture pushing all the way into Lombardy and Pomeranian pushing all the way up past Oslo. The Russian culture group is pretty prolific over here. Uh, somehow Ryazanian is uh, the primary culture over here in Sarigrad. Uh, makes sense. I guess they culture converted it or there was an event to convert it. But either way, uh, a few Rush Russian provinces and uh, one Ruthenian province here in this Bells province. The rest is all Romanian because that's a thing. And we have one Slovak province over here. I love it. I love to see it. The Italians definitely spread. And it's funny because Dalmatian is actually the primary culture over here in Egypt, splitting it with Turkish. So that is a thing. And in Iberia, it's all Andalusian and Basque. Truly the most blessed timeline. Likewise, Mexican is exclusively over here in Canada and like Michigan, as well as Andalusian is over here and uh, not really anywhere else to speak of outside of Iberia. Iranian culture was mostly pushed out of Iran, but uh, it does have Afghan culture pushing all the way up into the Uralic area over here. So uh, quite a bit of interesting stuff here. You can see Kurdish is a very, very big in this timeline as well. China is actually not very Chinese either. It's mostly Filipino. Koreans are exclusively Filipino. And then uh, the culture of the coast over here is Cham and Filipino with the interior mostly Tibetan, which is pretty funny. And then Shan, which I believe is kind of like a Southeast Asian culture. Look at this culture over here. Bozo. Bunch of bozos over here in West Africa. Some Burgundian, some Berber, and uh, like I said, mostly Pomeranian. But how about that Tuscan culture making up the majority of North America? Like I said, it's a me, Mario. They eat in the pizza and they cook in a meatball. You know, all those kind of Italian stereotypes talking with their hands and whatnot. But yeah, Tuscan is definitely the culture of America as well as the Caribbean. And of course, you know, we have to take a look at the great powers of the world. No surprise, Italy way out in front. Almost 2,000 development, in fact. 
ahead of Russia. Uh, then the Netherlands right behind them with Dahomey's in fourth place, but they're not really that close to the Netherlands. Following them by about a thousand development is Pomerania and then Siam in the sixth spot with Marathas, the Indian nation over here in the seventh spot and revolutionary Japan in the eighth with just over a thousand development. The Netherlands with a fully stacked economic hegemon, naval hegemon of Italy, but uh, they are not stacking that up, nor is Russia with their military hegemon. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe if you haven't already, because there's plenty of content you are missing out on. Like I said, become one of the homies and get early access to videos. Click the join button below the video. And like I said before, make sure you check out the sponsor Raid Shadow Legends. I really do appreciate them supporting the channel and you should support companies that support content you love. And a huge shout out to the patrons and channel members who keep this channel going. If you want early access to these videos and exclusive Discord benefits, make sure you check out the link in the description or the join button below the video.